To illustrate Blender's engineering modeling capabilities, we'll model a propeller blade based on station data, which is a collection of descriptions of cross-sections of the propeller at various points which span the blade. In particular, we'd like to take data in an image which was provided that could be plans to a propeller, plans to any object which is defined based on its stations, and we'll turn it into a mesh object in Blender that can then be modified and worked with further. So the first thing we got to do is go in and hit X to delete this cube. And what we'll want to do for this particular example is a background image, which is the stations which we'd like to use to define our propeller blade, which uh, you can find a link to in the description. So to do that, we're going to hit N to open up this panel. And we'll go down to background image, check it, open it up, go to add image, and then uh, open and browse for the image in our directory. So once you've chosen the uh, image in question, in this case I've named it propeller plan, you'll want to make sure you have all views selected right here. And you shouldn't have to change anything else, and that should add a background image. Now the way that you can check this is with your cursor in the, the 3D view. You'll want to hit 5 uh, to get into uh, orthogonal view, and then 1 to get a ZX plane view. And as you can see, the plans for a propeller have shown up behind this, and we can then use that as a template to trace with effectively. So I'm going to hit end to close the panel we used to introduce this background image. So here's our strategy moving forward. Now that we've imported our template, we're going to use Blender's Betsier Curve tool to model these cross sections one at a time into a, a Blender Curve type object. And then we'll align them properly according to the locations described in the plan. Uh, get them rotated into position so that they line up in the way that the uh, cross sections taken out of an actual propeller would be lined up. And then we'll convert them into uh, mesh objects and string them together as mesh loops, uh, which is a fairly automatic process. After that, we're going to uh, add the finishing touches to the tip and to the root of the propeller, which we'll do in a separate video. So let's start by zooming in on this cross section right here at the bottom right corner of our background image. Each time we approach modeling one of these cross sections, the first thing we're going to do is left click in the center of the crosshairs uh, on the template image to place the 3D cursor in the position we'd like it to be in. Next thing we're going to do is hit Shift A, go to Curve, and Circle. So the, the curve has shown up, but it's in the wrong plane. So the next step is, while well, we still have the uh, Betsier circle we just created selected, we'll hit R to uh, activate the rotate tool, X to constrain it along the X axis, and then 90 to give us a plan form view of the circle, and then enter. Now we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode, and as you can see we have four position nodes and another eight scaling nodes that allow us to reshape this circle into a spline which fits our required cross-section as nicely as we could. You could do this with multiple curve objects if you have a cross-section that couldn't be well represented by a circle, but for this propeller uh, each of these should be simple enough for us to get away with just a single Betsier circle. So the way I like to manipulate these nodes, which is a matter of preference, there's several ways you could do it. The way I prefer to manipulate them is to uh, hit G to grab it, and then I can simply drag the mouse and position these nodes wherever I would like them to be, and that works for both the positioning nodes and for the scaling nodes as well. I found that the easiest way to work with these is to position the, the four positioning nodes as, in a, as a starting point at the extreme points of your cross-section uh, along some set of axes that you've decided on. And then uh, rescale using the sizing nodes from there. And you may or may not have to reposition these positioning nodes as you go through the process. But I'll go ahead and show you for this cross section, a process that I go through to get these uh, mismatches between our curve uh, template and our, our Betsier circle eliminated. So 
So every time I'm moving one of these nodes, I'm just selecting it, uh, right-clicking near it, hitting G to uh, activate the grab tool, and then left-clicking to place it and leave the grab tool. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with this shape. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit Tab to leave editing mode, go into object mode. As you can see, it aligns uh, uh, as well as is uh, reasonable to our template. So the next step is we're going to take this curve object, which as you can see over here in the, in the tree as Betsier Circle, and all we're going to do is duplicate it and then position it properly where it would appear in this particular propeller blade as defined in this drawing. So the way that we're going to do that is come over here to the tool panel and click duplicate with our curve object selected and now as we drag the mouse we'll be dragging our uh, duplicate of our curve and we want to do our best to place that at the location that the crosshairs were described in the uh, drawing here along the span of the propeller blade so I'm trying to get this yellow dot which represents the origin as we defined it for our curve object which is why it was important to place the 3D cursor in the correct location. We want to get that dot as close to the center as we can so that everything will be lined up when we're finished with this process as a whole. And then we'll left click to place that center. So now we have the duplicate of our curve object, which Blender is named Betsy Circle 001, positioned properly. The next thing we're going to do is rotate it so that if we apply the same rotation to each one of our duplicates as we go through every cross section here, we'll have a well-defined propeller blade. So once again, we're going to hit R and we want to constrain along the X and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. So as you can see, now we're looking at our duplicate curve edge on, which means it lines up with the three-dimensional uh, model of this view of our drawing, which is where we would like to end up. So I've gone ahead and gone through that process for each of the remaining cross sections. And once you've done that, you can rotate out of the view we were in and see that we've lined them up nicely to represent the cross sections as they would actually appear in the propeller. So the next step is to shift, right click, and select every single one of these duplicate cross sections so that we have them all selected at once. Then we're going to use the keybind control J to join them into a single object. So now all of these curves that we once had as separate objects are the same. Next thing we're going to do is the keybind alt C uh, and we're going to select mesh from curve. So what that did was convert this single curve object which contains all of our cross sections into a mesh object. So when we go and tab into edit mode you can see it now is a mesh object with vertices and edges instead of uh, Betsier curves. So while we're in edit mode here we're going to go ahead and select all and now that the tool that we'll use to string these together into a single surface mesh is we'll click W to open the specials menu and then we'll go down to bridge edge loops right here. We click that and now we have our the bulk of our propeller blade. So that completes the process we set out to demonstrate. The next video will deal with how to close up the tip end as well as align these bevels properly and generate a circular cross section down at the root. Thank you for watching.